be either. I have been having some strange dreams, I have to say. Uh, not really about a character, but it's about the whole format of this production. Audience can get so close to you, and you sometimes have to fight through the audience. So it's, yeah, I've been having some strange dreams. It's actually quite draining, um, I think, emotionally, because I think about it a lot when I go home. And even when I'm asleep, asleep. <laughs> I had a nightmare the other night, actually, about it. <laughs> it's four days before opening night, and a huge logistical bombshell has dropped. We'd underestimated how long and how big this building was and how long it takes somebody to put their cello down, put it back in its bag, pick it up, go to the next place, take it out again, you know. And we just thought, oh, it'd be about two and a half minutes, and it was not, it was more. Because the building's so vast, the orchestra can't get around quickly enough to perform the whole opera twice as planned. A risky decision has been taken to start at scene four and only perform the opening scenes once, halfway through the evening. In effect, nobody will witness the story unfold in order. The only thing that is guaranteed is that everybody in the audience will be together to see the denouement of the story. So that is a given. So I've had to work backwards from that in terms of how we present this to the audience. There's the big old rosaries come on. Yeah. Isn't there a big, there's a big goal or a big symbol at the end of that? After hanging. After? Uh, after his long hanging, yes, there is. They're preparing for my death. They put rosaries on me and they give me bread and wine before I before I die. He is fulfilling his role, the professional killer. The cardinal arrives and instigate the execution at which point I take the, the wine and the bread and, f and deliver her her last rites, as it were, with her communion in the bread, literally moments before she's strung up. And I gradually get hoisted up, so I'm upside down with my arms hanging. And um, the dress will go over my head, so I won't actually see anything. I'll close my eyes anyway. And then I think what they're going to do is slit my throat, and there'll be blood and everything. But we haven't got to that yet. In a sense, I'd watch this production career towards the first night, and it's really down to all, everybody in the company. But I, I'm under no illusion that it's going to split opinion completely like no other project we've done. Bless heaven, that sacred Give me some wet hay. I am broken wind. Well, I won't put my costume on for a while. I'll just sit and relax. I'll look at my music. And wait for my time. Yeah. My voice it does feel a bit tired, but I'm, I'm sure when the time approaches to the opening and the adrenaline will kick in and we'll see. It's usually I'd have a day off before, before an opening night, but there just hasn't been the chance with this. It's just too much to do. <laughs> but I'll be all right. <laughs> I think one has to maintain one's sense of humour in this, or there'll be blood on the floor. In a brave step, Andrew Watts has decided his character's madness will be best conveyed if he appears naked towards the end of the show. I'm not a gym bunny. I don't have a body that's to die for. Uh, it has a small niche market. <laughs> I, 
I think that because it's lit so well, you don't really know I'm naked, but you can either work it out if I am not or, or I am. You just come closer or move away. So, okay. so anyone collection tickets, you all men? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. In there. Send them off. Security offers. Yeah. You know, my wife keeps saying, you know, which bits should I see, which bits should I see, and I'm refusing to tell her. I said, just don't just follow me around. There's more interesting stuff than that to see, you know. So just go and explore and be brave. Whether we fall by ambition, blood, or lust, like diamonds, we are cut with our own dust. Proud of myself, but also proud of my my boys and girls and my, my team. It felt like an opening night, and to be part of that for me is, is amazing. I feel I've just learnt so much just on this one project. Some of the fears I've had to overcome, so many things. And I'm very happy. I'm just you know it's crazily ambitious. I can't believe Ian O even instating the idea. And the fact that we've actually, we're here in a room with uh, 
the detritus of a 70-piece symphony orchestra and uh, the fact we've opened is amazing. I don't think we'll do anything as edgy and reckless as this, you know, with government funding cuts coming up. I think we have to say, OK, this is like the most extreme opera project you can do. We've done it and, you know, that's it.